Card guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some books that you probably may not have heard about. I got this idea from Haley and Bookland who shared some books that, you know, some of her subscribers may not have heard about. And that got me thinking, hey, I have books that I don't think a lot of people have heard about and I know that not a lot of people have been talking about. So I thought I would sit down and share with you guys some of the books that are on my book shelves that you might not have heard about because they're the ones that are behind the front facing ones. I'm starting off with a bit of a cheat because this is a self-published book series and it is from a YouTuber that I found several years ago when I did makeup tutorials and I just loved how creative she was with her makeup looks. She did the most intricate looks with the most minimal of product. Also she did like the most outrageous looks as well with everything but the kitchen sink. She was just that incredible and she's an incredible artist as well and she is just an amazing writer um, on top of all that. It's just like Jesus there's something that this chick cannot do. That is Outsider and Defiance by Claire Delise. Obviously I heard about these books from Claire herself. What I love about these books is that she created these book covers herself like she took this photo and she created this um, ring herself it is just an incredible book series an incredible journey that these characters go on it follows a half-blood called Astrid and after witnessing the brutal murder of her parents placed in the care of Dag a forgetful but well-meaning warlock she vows to never feel as lost and helpless as she did on the day they were killed and turns her back on the elves and the dwarves for destroying her life. 40 years later, young dwarf Jarl Bjorn is certain that a city, everybody just like puts a lot of consonants in names of places, oh my god, is under threat from an emerging goblin king. When his fears are dismissed, he asks Astrid to help him and his adoptive son Nud to reach this the capital safely and Astrid finds herself pulled back into the world she never wanted to be part of again. I devoured this book when I first got it and then I immediately went on to Defiance. There was supposed to be a third one but she never got around to writing it and then a couple of years ago she then rewrote the series and kind of launched it through a website or something like that and then she did comic books to go alongside it. She did like a graphic novel alongside of it. I just lost track of it that way. But I loved this series so much when I first started reading it. A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. This is the first book in the memoirs of Lady Trent. This was recommended to me by one of you guys and I absolutely loved this book. I have been filming for so long that I cannot speak. I absolutely loved this book when I read it. It was so imaginative. I loved the way that it's written in the first person. It follows her fascination with dragons. She found a dead dragon when she was little and she wanted to preserve it, but it crumbles to ash very shortly after the dragon dies. And so it follows her growth and understanding of dragons and their world and wanting to know more about them and her marriage and then going on an expedition. This is the first book in I don't know how many books are in the series. I think there's about four or five and then there's a spin-off series as well. It is very enjoyable especially if you like kind of like Victoriana style books with a very strong female character and dragons and exploration. It's just it's incredible. The Book of Three, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Perdian series by Lloyd Alexander. This is actually what inspired The Black Cauldron, which is one of the more underrated Disney movies. It is now on Disney Plus. Go watch it. I read this um, two years ago, two, a year and a half ago. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It follows a apprentice pig farmer, pig keeper, called Taran, and he's taking care of Henwyn the mystical pig because whenever she puts her snout into water she can predict the future. But Hen goes missing and Taran has to go on an adventure to find her so that the um, horned king who has been searching for Henwyn does not find her. Along the way he encounters a whole bunch of characters. He encounters Princess Alonwi and Gurgi and it is just very very good. It's the first book in a series. I can't remember exactly what the other books in this series are called but I know one is called The Black Cauldron which is probably where Disney took the title from even though 
that book is not the one that is the movie. The Book of Three is the one that the movie is inspired by. This is one that you probably never have heard of unless you live in Northern Ireland and that is Following the Sun by David Park aka Mr Park aka one of my high school English teachers. Now Mr Park's writing, I will always call him Mr Park, I will never talk about him as David Park because that's just weird. Mr Park's writing is extremely flowery and extremely dense. I will say that. He loves alliteration. This follows a father who has grown up in loyalist Belfast, he's lived through the troubles, he's raised his children and his daughter has just passed her GCSEs which is an exam that we sit when we are 16 years old. The daughter aces them all. She gets all A stars which is like the highest grade that you can get at GCSE and to celebrate she goes out and parties with her friends. She's not one that usually goes out some parties. She usually is one to stay home and study and to help others and to just be like a perfect little daughter but she takes ecstasy and dies. Swallowing the Sun deals with the lead character's grief. It deals with Martin's processing of his daughter's passing away this perfect little angel who has done nothing wrong in her life she takes ecstasy and dies like how is that possible and how much he just wants to make the world right it just deals with this man's grief it is a very hard hitting book it's a very short book it's a wonderful book and i really want to reread it again because it has been forever since i have read it next is one that i read a couple years ago and is also one that i really want to read again and it's one of my favorite books by this author and this author is known for The Shadow of the Wind. So I'm talking about Carlos Urias Zafon and Marina. Marina is like his YA novel. It is a very gothic novel. It is set during the 1980s following this character called Oscar and he lives in this boarding school in Barcelona. One day he like just ditches school and just wanders around and he ends up in this house, this really creepy house. I, I read this part at like one o'clock in the morning. It creeped the living daylights out of me. But he steals a pocket watch and guilt then compels him to return it and he then finds the enigmatic Marina and her father. Marina then takes him around Barcelona and they go to this cemetery where at the last Sunday of every month this woman arrives in a carriage dressed head to toe in black and she goes to an unmarked grave that just has a butterfly on the tombstone. She sets a rose down and goes. So they then start to investigate who this character is. They go from person to person to person to investigate and every single person has a piece of the puzzle. And what I love about um, Ruth Safon's writing is that whenever a character is telling a story you don't feel like you're just being told a story. You feel like you are immersed in that story. Like you are living what that character lived. He is so good at that. I felt the same way when I was listening to the audiobook for The Shadow of the Wind and The Angel's Game, which is the next book in that series. Marina has this atmosphere that is unlike anything that I have read in a book. The, the only other book that would really give me that kind of atmosphere is The Diviners series by Libba Bray. Whenever I do talk about Marina, I always kind of classify it as a mix of Frankenstein and The Phantom of the Opera. Just the characters in that remind me so much of those two stories. It's a concoction that really shouldn't work, but it does. And that's the way that I like to think of Marina by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. It's, it's a short book. You can get through it very quickly, but it is just... Mm, chef's kiss. Atmosphere. Brilliant. This next one did its rounds about two years ago when an adaptation came out starring Lily James but that is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Marianne Schiffer. This follows an author Juliet who gets this letter from Dawsey. He it lives on Guernsey and he somehow got one of her old books about this other author this poet I think. Her address was written in it because I think it used to belong to her and then it somehow ended up on Guernsey. He bought it somehow it ended up there and so he wrote to her to ask you know how do I get more information about this author and so they start a correspondence and he 
tells her all about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. It's kind of set post World War II and he's talking about the Nazi occupation of Guernsey which is one of the islands in the English Channel. It introduces you to a very eclectic bunch of characters and the way that this story is told is unlike anything. It is told completely in letters. You have letters between Juliet and Dozzy, Juliet and her best friend and other members of the society. Everything is told in letters. At first it really threw me off that everything was told in letters and I was like kind of on it. Okay now what was told between that letter and this letter and between who was writing to whom? But it works. Once you get into it, it really really works and I just love this book very much. It's very entertaining, very heartfelt, very poignant and it really just shows you what people went through just to survive during World War II when their homes were occupied by Nazis. Next is a series that again you probably wouldn't have heard of unless you're from Northern Ireland or Ireland and that is the Children of the Famine series by Marita Conlon McKenna. This is definitely children's book territory but I think they are an amazing collection of books. They are centered around the famine in Ireland and it has Under the Hawthorn Tree, Wildflower Girl and Fields of Home. Under the Hawthorn Tree follows Eilie, Michael and Peggy who are three children living in Ireland during the famine. Their father goes off to work to try to find food and then their mother goes as well and they don't return home. So they decide then to go to their aunts, their great aunts in a neighbouring town and village but obviously everything doesn't go as planned. Wildflower Girl follows Peggy as she moves to America. She goes to New York and she emigrates and becomes like a domestic um, helper with the, all these families. It's not plain sailing for her that way. One family is very abusive towards her and then she gets changed to another family and that there. And Fields of Home, Eileen is married, Michael is working and is just suffering hardships in the aftermath of the famine. They're very short books because they are, as I said, children's books. I grew up reading these. I read them when I was in like P6, P7. They've always left an impression on me, especially under the Hawthorn tree. Just the part where they're burying their baby sister, baby sister Bridget because she's died. There's no food for her. That's why it's under the Hawthorn tree because they buried her under the Hawthorn tree. And then I remember reading Wildflower Girl by myself when I was just a little bit older and I just love the series. I also have The Fandom by Anna Day. I enjoyed this book a couple of years ago when I read it. This is basically what would happen if you were sucked into your favourite television show. What would you do? Like if you were the main protagonist, if you were in that protagonist's shoes, what would you do? If you knew exactly what was going to happen, what would you do? But it also asks, well what happens off camera. You know the way whenever you're watching a TV show you're watching what the camera is pointed at but what happens off camera? What happens that way? Or what happens behind that part of the set? It's like completely real but then there are seeds that you don't understand. It gives you a greater appreciation of that show. You know what I mean? It was actually a competition idea submitted by Angela McCann and then Anna Day wrote it and it says not suitable for younger readers. <laughs> Interesting. This is YA anyway. I also have An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard or in Northern Irish, Cat Hard. Yeah, we don't like syllables apparently. I first heard about this book when I started watching Murphy Napier's channel. Murphy Napier. That's the way I've heard people pronounce her name. This is a story about magicians in like an unseen world in New York. Every 10 years there are these clans of magicians and every 10 years they have like a battle of their best magicians to see who's going to be the next clan leader, who's going to be in charge of everybody. But this time the turning, as they call it, happens early. Or like every 20 years? Yes, every 20 years. But the turning has come early. After only 13 years, Ian Merlin, the heir to the most powerful house in the Unseen World, has been elected to become the champion of his father's chief rival, House Prospero. Enter Sydney, an unknown magician from a candidate house, an outsider easily dismissed among the established wealth and power of the unseen world. 
What the unseen world will soon learn is that Sydney is a formidable duelist with power that hasn't been seen in decades and she has a score to settle. I really enjoyed this book when I read it and Murphy has never steered me wrong. This book should not be new to you if you've been to my channel um, for the last like two years and that is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funke. Not enough people talk about this book. I don't know why. Maybe because you know it is quite an old book. It's from like 2003. But this follows a character called Mo who has this ability that when he reads a book characters come out of that book. But the flip side to that is when characters come out people gotta go in. So when he is reading Inkheart to his baby daughter, the wife and the two cats go into the ink world, whereas three characters come out. Those characters want more people read out X years later, but Mo has said, I'm not reading anything, I'm not doing anything. But then Dustfinger turns up saying, hey, Capricorn wants your copy of Inkheart. And he's like, I don't have it. So then they go, on this journey to find a copy of Inkheart so that they can potentially read Dustfinger back in and then the mother out or they can stop Capricorn from getting it. And I just love this book so much. I have like, I don't know how many copies of this book now because I just love it so much. Two books left. The next one is also one that should come as no surprise if you've been around my channel this year at all and that is Jack Dawes by Ken Follett or Ken Follet whatever way you want to pronounce it. This is a World War II historical fiction. It follows Flit I can never say her name. It follows Felicity or Flick and she is like a major in the resistance, the French resistance. But she gets separated from her husband and her team after a plan goes completely awry and then they have to take out this telephone exchange so that the Nazis cannot communicate with each other then the allied forces can get in and do their stuff take them out do their stuff independent day Flick is then put in charge of an all-female crew Flick is the major in charge and then there are other people that have particular fields of expertise so one um, is good with explosives another is good with electronics, wiring, sharpshooter, blah, 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 blah. Obviously everything does not go to plan. And I love this book so much. I listened to it on an audiobook. It's narrated by Amelia Fox. She does an incredible job with it. It is just a wild ride from beginning to end. It is just an amazing, an amazing book. And I will say this is adult because it does have scenes of torture and potential rape and just, yeah, just things that are just not nice to happen to people. And the last book that I have to talk about is one that is part of a series. The third book should be coming out in June, but I haven't really been keeping up with it in terms of that, but I haven't heard it much about it anyway. And that is The Midnight Front by David Mack. This is the Dark Arts series, which includes Midnight Front and the Iron Codex. This is set during World War II and is an historical fantasy and it's basically like Harry Potter meets Doctor Strange meets Jason Bourne. It's a mad concoction but it's so good. Basically Cade is 21 and then he finds out hey you're a magician. What? And set during World War II magicians have actually been the ones that help turn the tide of important battles like they're there at Reim they're there on the beaches of Normandy to help what I loved about the Midnight Front in particular is that it really went deep like Cade is then trained he is brutally trained to harness his powers to become very much a powerful magician it is a brutal story when they go into the war effort they all branch off to do their own individual missions and what I love with David Mack is he takes risks. He takes risks with the characters and he takes you as a reader, takes you by the back of the head and thrusts you into it. There is one scene, there's one part of the Midnight Front that I was like traumatized by. I still think of it anytime that I look at this book. It is just so harrowing that you cannot not think about it whenever you, you think about World War II and when you think about 
this book. I really want to reread this again because it just is so good. And they rely on angel magic. It rem Who does that remind me of? That they harness angel magic. There was something that I was reading that reminded me of that. There are like unpronounceable names in this, but it hooked me from beginning to end. So this one is set during World War. This one is set kind of during the Cold War or at the beginning of the Cold War. And then I think the third one is actually set during the Cold War. This series is very well written, very fast paced, very hard hitting, and I just love it. It's it basically, if you wanted like a grown ups version of Harry Potter in World War II, this is it. So there you have it guys, those are some of the books that I think that you might not have heard about. Let me know in the comments down below if you have heard of any of these or if you are one of my longer subscribers and you've seen me talk about these books before thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in my next video bye